Hi everybody, it's Franny, and today we're going to be putting our intake manifold back together. Well, we certainly do have a lot of parts to put back together for this intake manifold, huh? I think my process is going to be just basically to go backwards from the video I did taking it all apart. And if you haven't seen that, I'm going to go ahead and link that up above so you can check that out. All right, so I think our first step in all of this is to get our intake manifolds remated back together. So I've got a new rubber coupler here, I guess it's called, that to fit this thing. Now, interestingly enough, this is the original and it was fine, didn't have any cracks or anything in it. It was just original but weirdly check this out it doesn't fit anymore it's wobbly on here it's super duper loose I mean it's just I wouldn't be able to actually get this look at this I wouldn't be able to get this thing really clamped on properly so it must have expanded quite a bit when it was off the engine weird okay whatever any rate the new one fits pretty well fits on here just fine that'd be great and we've got our brand new clamps here they're actually just replated but they look brand new okay now the next question is where exactly do you set this thing are they together are they a little bit further apart as this engine heats up of course these guys are mounted to the cylinder heads the engine's going to expand which is going to pull these guys apart from each other uh, that's the reason for the rubber coupler here totally makes sense so I think since this is our first step what I want to do is go out to the garage bolt these guys lightly on to the intake manifold out there to get the exact spacing and orientation for our coupler here and then we can tighten down our clamps and I think that's going to be a really good starting point. Well we're back in the garage and here's the engine. Now I need to get these intake manifolds placed on top of the engine just so we can get that distance set I was talking about. So I've got the new spacers here. We're only gonna do the insides and the outsides. So I'll go ahead and set my spacer on there and here. So just place those guys down. Notice they've got a bit of a chamfer there. That's for the fuel injectors. Okay, now we'll take our right side intake manifold and we'll place it over the top here. There we go. And I have a few of the cap bolts here that need to go on the top. So we'll just put these in. We'd only need this hand tight. Okay, all right, that's good enough. And now the left side. All right, I'm gonna take this off, this guy off and put it on the other side. There we go, that way I can push it in pretty much all the way, like that, there we go. Now I can drop this straight down. There we go. Now we were wondering about this gap when we were downstairs, and look at that, that's about it. That looks like it's, what is that, a little better than a, an eighth of an inch, maybe, um, maybe three or four millimeters or so. So that's our gap. Okay. There we go. All right. So 3.93, I'm gonna call that four millimeters is the gap here. And it's a little cool in the garage, probably about 50 degrees in here. So there we go, four millimeters. And looking at our picture here, before I disassembled everything, we can see our screws back here are uh, pretty much right where I've got them there. It looks like that's about right. Right, okay. And with that, we've got our spacing for our two intake manifold halves. What I'm gonna do is obviously just take this off, bring it downstairs, and we'll continue with the assembly. The first thing I want to install are our fuel rails here. I've got our injectors back from RC Fuel Injectors. So they did a beautiful job on these. I'm really excited to put these back on. It's a pretty simple assembly, really, pretty much. This guy just goes on here like this with two bolts, and then the injectors go in between here. So it's a pretty simple assembly. The injectors themselves have a rubber O-ring at the bottom and a rubber O-ring on the top here. So there's a little red cover that they ship these with. And we can see the rubber washer here. So what I'm gonna use for this to lubricate these, to get these things on, cause they're still pretty tight, would be a little bit of silicone paste, just the teeniest little dab, just enough to sort of wet the outside of them. That should help them slide in quite a bit easier. 
I'm going to do that for all of them. Now, RC was great, and they numbered the injectors. So I sent them out and told them what they were, and they sent them back with the numbers on them as well. So they're not just all jumbled. So I'm putting them back in the correct order here. So this is four, five, and six. One kind of interesting thing about the injectors, you see this blue cap here, this is the business end where the actual spray comes out. I kind of thought that was a protective cover, like that should come off. It kind of looks like it should, and we had those red caps on the top. And yeah, that's they actually go in with those on, and there's obviously a little hole on the end of them to spray through. So that was a little confusing, and I double-checked with my manual, and sure enough, it shows the little cap on the bottom. So that actually gets installed with it. Okay, so just a tad, just a tad, not much here at all. I'm going to hit the tops and bottoms. So we put them in there, they slide right in with that silicone on them. Works great. Now there's also three little kind of uh, horseshoe shaped little clips here that have to go on as well. It just sort of snaps over. It captures the a little slot in the injector itself and also this little flange that's on the fuel rail itself. With the other side, I tried something a little different. Instead of putting the injectors into the manifold first, I actually put them into the rail first. That way I could put the little clips on them much easier. And then it was just a simple matter to then put the entire assembly into the manifold. Okay, well I think that's our fuel rails for now. We can still sort of adjust and twist our injectors if we need to for the wiring harness and such. I think we're good here. Let's go ahead and move on. I think next what I want to do is just start building out the top of this thing. We've got our throttle body here, which goes on the bottom, and then our air meter, which kind of goes across. Now, I've spent a bunch of time cleaning this already. It was a little schmutzy, pretty bad, if you remember from the other video. But it's all nice and clean now. I've kind of been through it. There's The gasket is missing because I pulled that out. We have a new, brand new gasket to go in here. So let me go ahead and install that. I'm just going to put a little bit of silicone on this, just the, just to almost just make it shiny more than anything else, just to give it a little better sealing power. And the gasket just pops right in there like that. Yay. Perfect. Just like this. All right. Goes on there like that. It's held on with these cap bolts here, and then also these washers, which it's very hard to see, but the very top of them is sort of chamfered. So these are kind of special washers, and I remember taking them off actually. So they're the washers for this. Next, I'm going to install our rubber bellows that goes on the top here. Now, <laughs> look at this crazy thing. And there's a bunch of different clamps on it as well. And they're all sort of different sizes. So I had to test fit them. I think I've got them and also wanted them in the right orientation. Because, yeah, it's easy to work on it now with it out of the car. But if you ever had to work on this in the car, you don't want the clamps spun around in such a way that you can't get to them at all. This guy just kind of goes on the top here like this this. Okay, there we are. Next is going to be our airflow meter here, this guy. And it goes on here like that. The back support for this airflow meter is actually the back side of the air box itself that holds the air filter. So I have a new gasket here. I'll go ahead and pull this old one off and put the new one on. It's really wonderful that you can still get the old parts. It's ever so slightly different. Wow, so that's why you always want to be very careful taking your old one off and set it down the way it came off so you know exactly how this thing goes. Because this one, the new one, is pretty darn close. You probably could get away with it either way, but it's not exactly symmetrical. It feels better like this. It seems to line up all the way around perfectly. Boy, that's subtle. 
We want to get our gasket. We'll hold our gasket as we put this down. Yep, and that's lined up there, and this lines up there. Great. This is still loose. All of our clamps are still good and loose. Here's our brackets here. Get all this sort of happy before we tighten anything down whatsoever. So I keep looking down. I'm looking at my pad again and looking at the original assembly and I'm looking for the orientations of actually these clamps and finding where the screws are on them. So that's what I'm doing when I keep looking down here. All right, let's do our front bit here. This is the um, enrichment, cold enrichment device that goes here. And there's a tube that goes up there and a tube that goes down here. This is our new enrichment device that I got. So the old one was kind of jammed up when I bought the car. I didn't realize it wasn't even working. And I did that video to loosen it up and you can hear this new one clicking around. The old one is working, but um, I was able to find this guy for not too much money, so I thought I would go ahead and swap it out. a funny little diagnostic port. It's not in use when the car's actually running, so it's just strictly for diagnostic. Holy cow, that's kind of fiddly. There's a lot of different clamps. They have to be oriented just so, and we have to get this guy ready to be mounted whole nine yards, but it looks awfully pretty. Let's go ahead and tighten everything down. Okay, that's good and tight, 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 tight. Everybody's good, happy. All right, this is how it all ended up. We've got our clips up here on the top. And here as well, here, here, and our other clip down here. Boy, that looks nice, huh? Look at all that shininess, goldy goodness. This guy here is that little diagnostic port and the bracket there behind it. All right, that looks great. We've got a couple more brackets we need to install. This one is actually kind of funny. This one is for the uh, cruise control, I believe, that this car doesn't have, but it does have an attachment point for a little spring as well. So we need to put this one back on. Pretty simple, kind of goes over here. Here we go again. These are different screws. So these are teeny weeny little torque bit screws. I don't know why, other than maybe they bought the cruise control system from somebody? I have no idea. But anyway, they're a little bit different and no washers either. There we go. And that's that. Next, we're gonna install this little bracket and it holds the connector for the idle switch that's in the back here. We can hear it clicking away back there. It just kind of goes on here. There's a single bolt that holds it on. This guy slides in here, but I had to pull it. I had to sort of spread it apart a little bit to get to get it off originally. So let's go ahead and put this back on like that. And we'll use our pliers and just sort of crimp it down just a tad, just to get it to hold. Now I remember it being a little bit loose actually on the connector. And there are just two little pins back here that we just sort of had to crimp together. Those two pins there, just sort of pull them together a little bit. All right, with our connector on, we can now go ahead and install our bracket and that's the last of these uh, little weird torque bit screws for some reason, or bolts. It's kind of strange that they used them here, but they did. 
Well, that's looking pretty, isn't it? Boy, look at all that nice gold against the black against the silver. It looks great, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and turn the entire intake manifold around and start working on some of the stuff that's on the other side, which is actually the forward side of the engine. This is where the fuel lines and most of the fuel stuff actually gets attached back here. We've got our fuel regulator bypass valve guy here and then our damper over here. I want to run you through a bit of what I've been doing here. I, I spent uh, about an hour and a half off camera last night. It's been over a couple of nights. Just sort of fitting these assemblies. This is a lot like building a model airplane. You have to make sure that all the parts fit together before you actually commit them to where they need to be. And I've got things like this. Take a look at these three different clamps. So I've got these three clamps. It's so hard to know exactly where each one of these things go and they're very different, you know? Of course, I've got my pictures here that I'm using over and over and over. These things are, it's great to have so many photographs. I have a ton of photographs here. Just enormous number of photographs that I'm looking through for different things. And some of them are quite detailed like this one. And then some are much larger big picture photographs, sort of medium sized things or that sort of thing, so that I get an idea in context also where the parts are. Seeing a, the regulator up close is great if I want to read the part number, but it doesn't tell me really about how it lives in here. Let's take a look at this one assembly. I just want to kind of run you through my thought process here because I'm, it looks like I'm just assembling this and I know what I'm doing. I did take it apart and I do have a zillion pictures and I do have the parts here, but oh my gosh, look at all the different washers and things. This guy here is a big bracket and then this 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 uh, regulator here is screwed onto it. I've got this quite loose because I didn't quite know. I figured it went over here, but I'm like, does it hook to this? I'm like, no, 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 wait, that's different. That's the fuel. So I finally kind of looked at this and then I thought the bracket sat sort of on the outside of these bosses, but I couldn't get it to really fit right. It didn't seem right. And I loosened all of this up and looked at my pictures and it indeed goes like this with the bracket on the outside of the boss. There's only really one way this is going to go together in the end, and you just sort of have to play with these things for a while to sort of figure them out. Now, I don't want to put any stress on the fuel rails here, so I'm going to be locking these parts pretty much down and then moving the brackets into place and then finally tightening up the nuts at the bottom here on the actual regulator to get it all into place without, there's, without there being any stress on any of the parts. So here's our regulator. Here's the bracket down here. I initially thought that it might go on the other side of this boss, but it just didn't really want to fit. And it finally became fairly obvious that yes, it does sit on this side of the boss. And this is our fuel connection over here. We have the same sorts of issues over here with this regulator as well. We've got the same sort of thing. We've got a bracket back here, which has to sit up there, screws in up here. This guy is attached off the fuel rail onto this guy. We want to get our bracket started, get those bolts in, but we're not going to tighten them down completely just yet. All right, I've got the bracket on. It's still, I haven't tightened it down at all. Little regulator here. I don't want this to bind at all. This connection here is the most important of all. Make sure this is loose. Make sure it's happy. It spins on nicely. Everything seems to be lined up here. So I think we're ready to torque this down. And there is a torque spec for these connections here. And it's a lot less than what you would think. It's just 12 Newton meters or nine foot pounds. So it's actually really, really small. I'm also going to be using a crow foot here to get a little extra grab on this. You wanna make sure that if you're gonna use something like this, to, that you're 90 degrees, that you've got your, your sort of crow foot here, 90 degrees to the length of your ratchet. If you have it uh, straight out like this and, and sort of longitudinal in the same line, then you're gonna to have to go through some calculations to figure out what the increase in torque actually would be. But if you have it at 90 degrees, whatever your torque wrench is set to is the torque you'll get. So I've got this set and let's go ahead and lock this guy down. I'm gonna slide this guy on. All right, here we go. Everything looks good. We're gonna steady it with our 15 and lock it down here. There we go. 
that's it. So not tight at all, which is interesting. If you over tighten these guys, you'll, you'll sort of mess up these surfaces in here. You'll spall them really bad and then the thing will start to leak. So that's it. That's the spec from Porsche. We can finally tighten down our bracket and the big nut at the base of the bypass valve. Then it's on to the damper. We hand tighten the pressure fitting and add our bolt to the bracket. And that's it. Well, sweet. We've got our regulator and our damper in. Next, what I want to start on is the actual fuel lines. We'll start with the little bitty one. There's a teeny one that goes from the regulator here down to this intake here. All right, there we are. Torqued. I believe this goes on here like just like that. There we go. Yep, just like that. All right, here we go. There we go. That's nice and tight. Here we go. There. That looks better. Okay. And that's that. We've got our first two fuel lines in place. Let's go ahead and get this one in, this big gangly one. It's a little bit difficult to kind of get it sorted where it needs to go, but it slides underneath here. And we're at the back side here of the manifold. Now this line here has to go up through here. And this little bracket that's right here is going to attach to our same bracket here that our uh, regulator is on. This thing's a little fiddly to get into place. It really is. Okay. There we go. And that's where our bracket goes, is right here. So let's go ahead and throw a bolt in there just to get started. With that sort of in place, let's go ahead and spin the entire thing around and work on the front side. Now on this side, we also have a bracket right here that needs to get attached right here. So let's go ahead and throw another one of our little bolts in there. Our fuel lines then connect on each side. So we can just place them on and hand tighten these for now. You want to make sure that when you do set these things in here that they go in straight and not at an angle or off to one side or whatever. So in this case, we have to turn the the line down a little bit just to get it to line up properly. It should screw on nice and easily with no fuss. There we go. That looks good. At this point, let's go ahead and torque down these fuel connections. There we go. Well, this is a little bit crazy. See this? And I've got my torque wrench all the way in the back here and a big long extension coming up to this. And the reason is I actually have to turn this from the back side in order to get the torque wrench to work. Okay, here we go. The other way. Okay, here we go. Well, that may seem like an extreme amount of fuss just to get this, this particular connection on, but I really do want to use the torque wrench on these things. If you over torque them, they will leak. So it's very important to torque them down properly. Well, next we've got our little bolts here that we're holding on our brackets. So we can go ahead and lock those down. And remember, we've got our little bolt back here as well. All right, and that's our big fuel line on. Next, I'm gonna install this, the little brake booster uh, assembly here. Didn't do too much to this thing, just sort of cleaned it up a bit, but we did get some of the metal replated, this bracket and this clamp as well, and I polished up this tube, which looks like it's brass. It's really, really nice. So this end of this goes in here, up here onto this bellows. The other end of it here goes to this silver connector here on the manifold, and then this bracket just sort of sits up here. So let's see. So we want to slide this guy on. Work you all the way on. Thump. Okay, great. Our brass tube here, we'll just push that in as well. There it goes until it goes ka-thump. And we'll just tighten up our clamps. That ended up looking like this in the end. Does not look great. Nice good connection. This is our bracket here. Push that down a little bit. I think it'll be fine. Now the next guy we need to tighten is this guy down here. 
Next, I'm going to install one of the little vacuum lines. This is a rubber Y connection here. These are hard lines and then some soft lines on the end. And I think I mentioned I put this clamp on the end just to keep this from coming off. Now I have some better clamps for it. So what I'm going to do is take this guy off and swap it off with some real clamps. This Y connector connects to the bottom vacuum line here on the throttle body. This other end of it here goes to our pressure regulator or bypass valve is really what it is and then following back through here all the way down to this guy to our damper so we'll just put that line on that's pretty good all right well in the end here we put a clamp here and here and then we didn't want our entire Y coming out either, so we've got a clamp on that, and that's good and tight now. These lines in here seem fine. They're not, they don't seem the least bit loose, actually. They seem fine. Then down at this end, this for some reason has uh, one of these braided lines on it, and it's really good too. It's really tight in there and really good here, so no need for clamps on that. Next we have our little throttle push rod we'll install. There's a little clip here as well. It goes onto the throttle body right here. I've put a little bit of grease on it. There it goes. Now we can work our little clip on. Snap. There we go. And that's all there is to it. There we go. That's working well. Next is the little return spring. It goes from a hole on this bracket down to a hole over here. All right. Kind of twist it a little bit, but there we go. Spring is back on. That looks great. Next, I'm going to install this bracket. This is the bracket that holds the connectors for the sensors, the position flywheel sensor, and also the temperature sensor, actually. So it mounts just right here. No craziness at all. This is pretty straightforward. So these pictures are so, so helpful. Does it go on this way? Does it turn around the other way? Does it turn around that way? The, the bracket itself isn't indexed. So if you don't know exactly how it goes back on, you don't have a perfect memory, which I don't, then uh, you're kind of out of luck or you're gonna have to look through the manual and try to find a picture in the manual. So much easier if you've actually just taken a picture of it yourself. So that's what I've got here. And I've got a bracket on there. It looks great. Let's tackle the wiring harness next. It's a little gangly, but uh, I think this is going to be our, our saving grace here. This little pink connector here I know goes on the far side over there on the same bracket that holds on the damper. certainly is nutty. Look at this. It's all done. We've got everything installed here. Everything else that needs to go on, stuff that goes here or here, we're going to put on when we put this on the actual engine and we'll reattach all that stuff then. But for now, I think we're done with this assembly. We've got our wiring harness in. We've got all of our fuel lines in, all the other stuff attached. It's quite a bit of an assembly here, hitting a lot of little parts and a lot of this and that. And I had to take some stuff apart and do it two or three times in order to 
get it just right. But I'm pretty happy with it. So that's the back side. Let me go ahead and turn it around so you can get a good look at the front side. Boy, that really looks great, doesn't it? Holy cow. It was a bit of work, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks amazing. This is the side that you'll see when you're in the back of the car looking at the engine. This is what you're going to see. And all this new plated parts look great. We've got our new fuel lines. So we don't have to worry about those things anymore. I'm pretty stoked. This is pretty sweet. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was kind of a bit long and it kind of tedious, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Questions or comments, leave them down below and you know I'll get right to them. Thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, we've got obviously lots more going on here. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. Hit the little bell next to it to be notified and everything. And we're going to be posting lots of videos on this. We're going to put the whole engine back together. It's going to be great fun. So, all right. Well, thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Okay, well, until next time, safe travels. Bye.